So we know a lot about the, um, the major indicators which we've been using for a long time about uh, the nature of inequality. We don't know a lot about uh, what's going on, particularly inside of people's heads. So my own work is about trying to understand direct effects. So a lot of our research are about these proxy effects. So we can describe uh, poverty and inequality in terms of housing, uh, education, uh, in, in terms of these, particularly these distributional outcomes. You know, so you can say so many of the, this category of people is getting uh, this and so many of that category. So it's not about stopping that, it's about deepening it. We need to, uh, and so this is a plea, we need to understand what the direct effects are on people and how uh, uh, particularly the trauma of, of, of both poverty and inequality uh, uh, are, are activators or, if you like, inhibitors for how people are dealing with the realities with which they're confronted with. Now, that for me is a big, big thing. I mean, why is it, for example, um, uh, and so I'm generalizing now, you know, why is it that you go to a place like Senegal and you see so much entrepreneurship? You see people doing things for themselves. And we seem to have, and maybe, and I'm putting this as an uh, hypothesis now, the, the damage of apartheid has been so uh, severe uh, that it's robbed us of the sense of doing things uh, for and in our own interests. So, you know, this incredible stuff around alcohol, drugs, uh, for me, uh, as ways in which people are, are dealing with a situation in which they find, find themselves, we need to understand. We need to understand this empirically. Um, so there's a whole body of work waiting for uh, us to do for Zilla. I mean, it's, 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 it's great having these abstracted high-level indicators, but we need to understand the effects. Uh, uh, if we are wanting to turn the situation around uh, inside of this, uh, the, the space of South Africa. And South Africa is a very particular kind of uh, chemistry and combination of things to it. You know, we need to be, be doing a whole lot more uh, research. So we know a lot, but there's a whole lot that we don't know. Well, at UCT here, uh, uh, we were responsible uh, for introducing into uh, the academic community this idea of engaged scholarship. It's a very particular uh, idea. Uh, and this is about how you uh, 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 take your, 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 your knowledge uh, and you bring your knowledge to bear on solving problems. Um, and uh, solving problems are ever not in this patronizing uh, kind of condescending way that uh, you know I'm doing good here for the people, but uh, taking that knowledge and 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 making that knowledge itself an area of democratization and an, an area uh, of engagement. Of saying to people, I know some things here, and I can see that there are some issues here. Am I right? Uh, and um, and so engage scholarship uh, as a as a way forward is, 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 as things stand at the moment, is, uh, is, is for the South African context, uh, I think the, the most uh, uh, applicable, the most appropriate uh, for, for dealing with this black, white stuff, rich, poor, uh, rich geographies, poor geographies, uh, uh, for this place of UCT on the mountain and you know, and the communities out far flung there. You know, it, it is about getting into a, 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 an ethical space, which is what our research, I think, now needs to come to understand.